I am here today with Matt Nixon and we're going to be talking around um, basically how he went from doing a fun run um, with a bit of a few obstacles in the way to um, to to skating a hundred miles on a frozen lake um, and all the sort of weird and wonderful bits that he's done in between. Um, and so, yeah, over to you, Matt. Do you want to give us a little bit of a background uh, uh, to you and, and, and how it came to this? Yeah, sure. Uh, hi, Sarah. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, it, uh, it started quite a few years back, really, when um, I was kind of working a lot, uh, as people do, and uh, yeah. I got pretty overweight and a bit bored and that kind of stuff. You know, middle, maybe middle-aged um, crisis, although I was only 30 at the time, so hopefully it wasn't quite middle-aged. <laughs> um, so, so, yeah, we did the wolf run in Leamington. Um, I kind of got cajoled into doing it. And uh, uh, did that with Donna, my wife, and um, loved it, absolutely brilliant. And it really brought me back to what I used to do when I was a kid, because we used to live in the countryside, you know, this town I used to live in had no traffic lights and 10 pubs, it was that kind of place. Um, <laughs> sur surrounded and you still by... went outside. <laughs> and you still went outside. Yeah, that's it, yeah. Still... Well, I was, only, I was only young at the time. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. But, uh, so yeah, we had uh, like a river that ran through it and some woods and fields and stuff. So I used to be outside a lot. And um, so doing this wolf run kind of brought me back a little bit to that kind of feeling. And, but also it kind of reminded me, if you like, I can do that kind of stuff and I enjoy that kind of stuff. So from there, I lost quite a lot of weight, although I've put a lot of it back on and <laughs> um, started doing a bit of running and um, wanted to beat what I'd done at the Wolf, Wolf Run last time, which was I didn't manage to do the monkey bars. So I might, wanted to go back and do the monkey bars properly, which I did. Um, nice. So that again kind of made me think, well, I've gone back and I've achieved something different and I've, I've improved. So maybe I can improve a little bit more and do something different. So was it, was that, was that sort of drive? Did that come from, oh, I've let myself down. Like I, I should have been able to do the monkey bars or was it, um, was it a bit it's less? It's just frustrating. It's just kind of my, um, I think how my brain works. If I can't do something, I'll, I'll either, that doesn't matter and push it to one side or <laughs> I'll think, well, I can actually do that. Why can't I do that? And I, yeah. I want to do it next time, and it's kind of a bit bit of determination, I suppose, to try to try and do it. But okay. um, I tend to kind of want to do things like that, yeah, uh, properly. Mm -hmm. um, so after that, I ended up doing getting quite a lot fitter, and I did kind of a triathlon in Stratford, um, mm -hmm. and I did a coast to coast um, cycle and run from Nairn to. Fort William up in Scotland. Oh, wow. Okay, um, wow. So that was about 100 miles or so, um, uh, like a race, although I wasn't racing. I was just trying to finish it, really. To be honest. <laughs> you were racing against yourself. Racing against nice. myself, absolutely. Um, <laughs> and I've done a few uh, events, like running races, marathons, ultra marathon, that kind of thing, adventure races with a bit of mm -hmm. extra. Adventure race basically tends to be a run, with a little bit of something added in, like you might swim across a lake or you might abseil down a hill or you might do something different, basically. Okay. It tends to involve getting wet at some description. Oh. So I did a bit of that. And um, then I did a um, Husky expedition, which was 300 kilometers, I think, from Norway through Finland and Sweet finished in Sweden at the Ice Hotel. Um, that was really cool. So looking after it. How did you choose that one? Because you kind of went from. <laughs> like, I can I can see the thought. Well, pattern wasn't, races. I didn't think that one was going to be physical. You see, I thought that was just sounded really quite a cool thing to do. And when yeah. I actually rang the organisers, um, to ask about it, so I did these things for charity, most of them for for a cancer yeah. charity, uh, cancer research, and. Um, so when I rang them and said, um, does this really go out in the middle of nowhere, you know, in the wilderness and you're looking after your own dogs and you're sleeping in a tent on the snow? And, <laughs> Is and this they, really yeah. what happens? Yeah, they said yes. And I was like, perfect. I'll, that sounds good. So that's what I wanted. I wanted to kind of get out, you know, in the middle of nowhere and um, and do something really different. And, uh, and it was great. It was really, really good. Very big learning curve, obviously, when I've not had dogs at all at home growing up. Um, <laughs> 
So and then you were the proud owner of how many? <laughs> six, yeah. And they oh, Cara, were quite Cara, good at Cara tangling Cara. themselves up. And um, yeah, then we'd obviously have to put our tents up at night, cook our mm. own food, get our own water and yeah, that kind of stuff. So, so that was melting, presumably melting snow, is that well, Actually, um, because of the route it was in, um, there's lots of lakes and rivers oh, okay. and on the way. So we were able to break through the um, ice and collect it, thankfully. Because okay. uh, melting snow is quite a lot harder because you melt like a big chunk of snow like that and might get that much water. <laughs> so it's, it's really, so it's really not very nice, uh, not very much fun. Um, so yeah, after that, I was kind of looking at stepping it up a gear again a little bit, really, and and I did a hundred mile ice skate down a frozen lake in Outer Mongolia, and it was with a company that I'd done a few events with before. And I uh, just spotted this advert and thought, that looks cool. I'll, uh, I'll do that. So, uh, <laughs> and you and you skated? Yeah, I didn't skate. I skated when I was a kid. I skated a few times. I remember going to the ice rink, you know, with the folks, probably for a birthday party or something. But I um, hadn't skated probably for 25 years. So never had so. any lessons or anything like that? No. 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 Who needs that? So, um, <laughs> and uh, so I took the kids to uh, the ice rink a few months before going um, and fell over and broke my wrist so so that was a, a really good start and that didn't put you off no because uh, I'd already booked the flights I'd already paid for the trip um, I'd already got some charity money coming in I, I organized an event as well where um, a chap called Sean Conway came to speak uh, at um, so I already had all the things in motion to raise money and, and get going to do it. Um, so in my head, all I was going to do is switch from ice skating to walking it if I had to. Right, um, okay, yeah. So that, that was the, the pull, really, that I was always going to go. I was always going to give it a go. Um, because you can do, you mentioned before we, we started recording, we had a little quick chat and you mentioned that actually people can, you can do different things so they yeah. can, someone can cycle it. and Yeah, they call it um, by any means, I think it was, although there was only three options, but uh, essentially you could. <laughs> Which isn't really but, any means. I know, yeah, essentially you could either run it or walk it, which quite okay. most people did. There was a group of, I think, 28 of us that went total. It was the first time it had ever been done um, as, a, as a group. Okay. Um, They'd gone with one or two of them previous to have a look, but they'd not done the full line, okay. you know. Yeah. Um, so most people ran it or walked it. There's people from all over the place, Australia, America, um, Bristol. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Almost. <laughs> yeah. And um, there was one guy that cycled it um, with the little studs on the tyres, you know. Um, oh, okay. it, right? And there was nine of us, I think, that, I tried to ice skate it. Now the ice skates are very different to what you have at the um, uh, rink. You know, they're not attached to it fully. You've got like a, if you've been cross country skiing, you've got like one toggle at the front of the boot, like one okay. bar which attaches to the skate or the ski. And then yeah. the skate kind of comes in underneath. So you can, you basically, because cause of the way that the frozen lake is, it's not pristine kind of flat, lovely, easy skating it's all lumpy and hilly and there's big massive boulders of ice out on there and that wow. which means basically you can't skate all of it so you have to be able to unclip the skate and walk parts of it there's big oh, okay. expanses like 10 kilometer maybe five kilometer expanses that you just couldn't skate it was impossible to skate because you've got like these knives kind of poking up out yeah. of um out of the ice but um, yeah, really, really, really surreal place. But um, and I I got injured when I did it. Actually, I got injured on the third day, late on in the third day, which meant I couldn't skate the last day. But I did still finish by walking it. Although I probably I probably shouldn't have done because I'd really um, torn some ligaments in my ankle. But um, oh, no. but I went for it anyway. <laughs> Well, the thing is, when you're out there, isn't it? I, I, yeah, I'd be, I'd be with you on that. <laughs> I'm going to complete it. I'm going to do it. Yeah, it was like that. <laughs> Nothing was gonna. I mean, because of the, I've got so much money for charity. I think I raised, I think five and a half, six thousand pounds for for charity, and 
and I'd been talking about it for, with everybody. Obviously, I'm going to do this. I'd been on the radio a couple of times and um, been in the local newspapers and that kind of stuff. And I just kind of, it was the little bit of pressure, I suppose, but also just, I was just never going to not do it. Not do it. It um, wasn't an option. Yeah. Yeah. I bet your legs caned at the end, though, didn't they? Yeah, it wasn't very nice. Um, especially, obviously, there's a, it's not a quick place to get to Mongolia. So no. coming back from there was not nice either with, obviously, an, an ankle like that. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, nothing was broken, thankfully. But almost, I think, um, the the uh, paramedic, we had a paramedic with us as well on the ice. And uh, all he could say was, um, put some ice on it. So <laughs> I just sit where I am then, should I? Yeah, I down to the lake, got this great big chunk of ice and rested my ankle on it. Yeah. <laughs> it's quite handy in a way. <laughs> Into it at the right place. So what's all the driving force behind this? What makes you do all these different challenges? So yeah, um a while a while back, um my um granddad passed away and my dad at his funeral um said the words, um, life's not about the number of breaths that you take, but the moments in your life that take your breath away. Mm. So that kind of hit home quite um, solidly, you know, that that life's all about getting, using these breaths to their fullest. So having mm. like a my full breath moment or a full breath moment. So I started writing down in a book, in an A to Z book, um, all of the kind of positive things that I've done, or it could it could just be that me and the the kids have had have burst out laughing on something that's happened that you kind of write down, or it could be something like the hundred mile ice game. Yeah. Um. So I put everything down in this book. Um. It's to try and prove to myself, if you like, or try and um, inspire myself that I've achieved things and I've overcome challenges and imposter syndrome and self-doubt and all these kind of stuff that you've got proof that you've achieved it yeah um and i started writing all these things down and it's actually turned into a book now so i've got a, a book or a journal out uh, for sale that um actually does that so the owner of the book can write yeah. their own full breath moments down oh nice um, and where do people uh, get that one from uh, what's that sorry where do people pick that up from? Can you get it from Amazon? Um, from the website, um, direct at the moment. Um, uh -huh. So I can obviously share the links and it's a great yeah. Christmas present. <laughs> yeah, great Christmas um, present. No, it's but, a great uh, idea. Yeah, it's got a few tools in there as well, like adventure planning tools. So I've, I've, I've got an area in the book that's called fuel. So fuel is kind of what drives everything, isn't it? Drives cars mm -hmm. and us as a human by eating food. and yeah. fuel for adventure if you like it i've called it a future unique experience list so f-u-e-l mm -hmm. so the idea of that is that you write down what your fuel is what you want to do and when because you know with a holiday for example people book a holiday a year two years in advance yeah and um, hopefully like the way things are going with covid <laughs> sometimes you have to exactly. even if you don't want to <laughs> yeah, um for other stuff you kind of don't like if you say oh i really want to learn how to I don't know, play the guitar or whatever, or mm. I really want to, whatever it is, like uh, learn to ride a bike or whatever, you know, okay, so when are you going to do it? And yeah. if you write it down and you tell people what you're going to do and why, um, and then hopefully those people will keep prodding you on the shoulder and ask you if you've done it yet, you know, that's the idea. But you can look back in this book and you've got like a bit of a plan of when you yeah. want to do those things. Um, and focusing on what, in the nicest possible way, what time you've got left. You know, when you when you're old and bold, like or older and bolder, like me. What well, I'm going to do? I'm, I've got Martin's got this calendar and it counts down. It's yeah. got the black marks on the number of weeks. That yeah, yeah, I've got that's, in, that's something similar in the book. Yeah, which is it, it does have the connotations. It, you know, some people might think it's a little bit kind of morbid or you know, but I, but, I, I then I it kind of. I think it's too much of a reality check for me because it kind of freezes me into panic. <laughs> like I'm like, oh, is that all I've got? And then that's like, that's terrible. And then it, I kind of get, rather than think, make the most of it, I'm too busy being distracted by, oh my God, is that all I've got left? <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, there's another one in the book as well, which um, 
is called um, Jar of Weeks, which basically you've got um, one jar that's full of, I don't know, it might be pasta or counters or something in, in the jar. And it might be something that you're working towards. Let's say you want to be want to start a podcast or something, you know, mm-hmm. and you want to start a podcast by July next year. So however many weeks that is, let's just say it's 25 weeks. So you could have 25 counters in your jar and you pick up a counter at the end on a Sunday night and you're like, right, have I moved any further forwards with my dream of doing a podcast or um, have I not? But whatever mm. happens, that counter, that week, that whole week that you've got in your hand is kind of gone. It's been gone. spent. So, mm. you know, and then over time, obviously, the the counters Brindle. drop in the jar and you can kind of see oh, the time that. you've been... I, I think oh, I could you cope know. with that to, towards a goal rather than my death. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, it could be anything. I mean, the, 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 the life, uh, the boxes of life is the other thing that you mentioned earlier in the, in the book as well. And that... It does have some people do feel that way, like you're, you're mm-hmm. feeling, but mm-hmm. um, for me, I think it's kind of like, right, I've got let's say 40, 40 years, <laughs> I've got 40 years left, let's fingers crossed. So, I really want to do this, 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 and this. So, I might not be able to do those things in 10 years' time, let's just say, for whatever reason. Yeah. Like, I've got I've had arthritis in my toes that I've had in operations on at the minute, and arthritis in my shoulder I've had operations for I've had a discectomy in my back and so my body's starting to kind of say maybe some of the crazy stuff it is isn't it I've noticed that I'm like what what's wrong with you you need me to stretch (laughs) so there's got to be a time when you're going to do it if you really want to do it and 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 that's the um, thing if you really want to do it you'll find a way of giving it a go you know um I would hope Nice, I like that. Okay, so what's next for you? What have you got? What have you got? Well, planned? in my list, I've got quite a lot of things <laughs> booked in. Well, not booked in. Things I'd like to do, um, but things keep fueling it as well. I mean, it's, it, in the fuel list as well, it's kind of um, like one of the top things that the family. So we've got two boys, uh, twelve mm-hmm. and nine, and uh, obviously Don and my wife. One of the top things we want to do is go to Costa Rica, um, like a bit of a family uh, adventure there for a couple of weeks but yeah so uh what but what ones like adventure wise if you like for personal ones i'd love to yeah. cycle all the way around iceland there's like a road that goes all the way around oh really iceland that'd be really cool how long's that uh, i think it's 1500 kilometers 1500 kilometers it's quite quite a long way, but that's it quite be, a long way, isn't it? I mean, that it's one is kind of like a little bit far out, but yeah. it's something that's a bit different, which I quite like doing. I like doing things a bit differently. Um, but will you build up to something like that? So, will you do? Will you look to do other cycle stuff of shorter distance? Yeah, possibly, just possibly. Go I, mean, for I did it. a cycle, um, like bike packing trip this May, just gone. Which was um, at the, in the Outer Hebrides. Okay. There's an island chain on the northwest of Scotland that you've got ten island, well, more than ten, but ten that come kind of together with roads on and stuff, and that's about 185 miles, I think that was. And, oh wow! Um, so I did that in May with a tent and sleeping bag and food and the tent and everything's on your on bike. The bike, yeah. So it's quite hard work. I mean, sometimes I was pedalling as hard as I possibly could downhill to go forwards. It was that windy. But um, but for that, I only really went on the bike like a couple of times before I went. Just, Just go on with it. Well, it's kind of, yeah, I should have done probably more and it would have probably been easier doing more. But it's not all about kind of the, the training to death. It's kind of you've got to enjoy it as well because you'd be fed up of it by the time you got somewhere like that otherwise. Yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? By the time you actually start the thing, you're already over, yeah. over being on a bike. Before, where I've done uh, trained for a race, a run, where I've been running for like the last six months, really flat out, you know, solid, and mm. you get injured a bit more, and you know, because you're doing more, and um, and I kind of started getting a bit bored of it, and you kind of, you know, it doesn't actually help for the main thing. Obviously, it does help when you're there, yeah. and having that reason why. 
mm. why you're doing something. I really find that having a reason for doing things makes a massive difference to me, um, especially training for something. Um, if you really, really, really want to do it for a reason, um, that makes and then I've got a group. We're going to Kilimanjaro next October. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's wow. 12 of us going to Kilimanjaro. Um, and, uh, yeah, there's a few things. I'd like to do the Pembrokeshire Coastal Path as well. Oh, well, yeah. Walk, walk that or hike that, you know, nonstop with a bag or a camping, you know. Again, with carrying it. Yeah, I just... We, we went to... Have you been to New Zealand? Yeah, only uh, only actually to the casino in Auckland. <laughs> it's a bit, it's a different. Yeah, that's a. I basically had a stopover of about six hours because Donna Donna stayed there for a few weeks, but I had to go back to America to work. So, um, oh, no. so I went, ended up in the casino because they did free drinks if you were playing the slot machine. Yeah. <laughs> so that was the and not not alcoholic oh, drinks no. by the way. Just no, that's, that's not. Yeah. Well, to be fair, and I I was a. I went when I went to Las Vegas when I was like younger. Yeah, we played on the slot machines because they they bring around the drinks while you're playing on the slot machine. Yeah. So I was like, this will do. Um, but yeah, we went to Milford Sound and we went and we met a guy who was about to. We were cooking up in the sort of campsite kitchen and he was he was like, oh yeah, I'm I'm I'm, I'm kind of carving up for I'm doing the there's a walk and they actually take you in a boat over the other side of. A river that was there yeah. um lake that was there and then you walk and it's a five-day walk and it's carrying everything that you've got and stuff and it's we were like wow that's amazing and it, we were in shoulder season so whilst we were there um it actually began snowing in um queenstown when we were down there um so you know he was he, he said he was kind of a little bit late in the season to be doing it really mm. and we just weren't in a position to do it um but i was like that is amazing and that is one of the things that Martin and I both said we'd like to go back and do would be that that walk. For yeah, me, uh, the whole thought of carrying. There's um, some well-known, I mean, if it's somewhere like um, like Patagonia, they have the W Trek, they call it, uh, hmm. which is, you know, you got like the three sisters, the big, there's these big kind of columns of rock, basically. Yeah, okay. but, it's, uh, but the walk you do is shaped like a W, so it's called W Trek. But, oh, okay. um, but that they do uh, places like that now. You can do it self support, um, supported by yeah. people that kind of book the campsite for you and put the tents up, and you know, yeah, you can you can do it in different levels. But um, but yeah, anything like that would be uh, be amazing thing to do. Yeah, and it's a good reason well, to go back as well, isn't it? Well, that that was, yeah, that's my thing. Yeah, we, we're always like, it'd be great to do with the kids, and then we're like, really. Like, can you imagine telling any any children of any age that, yeah, we're going to spend five days trekking and with carrying all our equipment? Yeah, a couple of days, kids might, because I'm a scout leader as well, and um, but yeah, a couple of days you might get out of them. And say, You've got <laughs> one, or two, one or two um, kids that would definitely want to do all Love of it. it. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. but I think uh, we're going to have to. I'm, I'm going to have to use all my sales skills to sell it to them. I think. <laughs> There's going to have to be some real promise at the end. Yeah. yeah I think that's, uh, that so what would you say to someone if they had, if they were like, yeah, you know what, I've got things that I'd really like to do. I do not have an idea of where to start. What would you say to them? Because I think that's the thing is it's the starting sometimes, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, I would point out, by the way, I'm not really very good at a lot of the stuff that I kind of do. Like obviously the ice skating, I break my wrist. So uh, the cycling, I'm not a brilliant cyclist. I just pop people along at my own speed um i'm not trying to beat anybody i'm not trying to be anybody different i'm not trying to be some sort of adventure guru nothing like that i'm just kind of want to give it a go so getting started for me i mean fast forward sorry not fast wind it back kind of 18 months two years ago and uh, i'd put on quite a bit of weight again for which i've kind of my weight kind of goes a bit like this yeah. It, I'm um, another one like that. I blame and, the children, um, but it's not all down to the children. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> I um, didn't really want to go for a run because I didn't want people to see what I looked like when I was running because I knew I knew what I'd run like before and I knew I wasn't going to run that fast now and I was a bit nervous about going. So I made so I thought, well, how can I get around that a little bit? And so I went at night. So just. You know, I mean, we've got a canal, which is not some people's cup of tea at night. I grant it's not, 
it's not a ripped outfit. Don't blame. Nobody blame Matt. No, if they get don't, the don't do it if you don't feel safe. But, but I'm not bothered with that kind of stuff. I'm quite happy to walk around a wood in the at night or run up a canal in the dark because I know no one else is going to be there, funnily. And, um, well, unlikely people are going to be yeah. there. So, so I just went ran up there for a, a few um, a few times to kind of get my confidence back. And then once I'd started um, kind of doing that, I kind of felt, okay, yeah, I'm not actually that that first but also working out or realizing which i should have known before no one gives a crap if you're no. doing well or bad you know no. in the nicest possible way no one would give a monkeys if they saw me puffing and puffing running up the road or wearing no. whatever i would have been wearing you know no one cares no. and um and trying to tell myself that because obviously self-conscious or whatever yeah and um and the more you do it, obviously, the little bit, little bit, little bit, the better it's going to feel and the better you're going to get at it naturally, you know, not trying to put any pressure on myself. Like um, running wise, all I actually used, I had a, I got a watch which shows my heart rate on it. So all I was trying to do is keep my heart rate, a certain heart rate. I wasn't bothered about how fast I was going. Um, yeah. Just trying to see the improvements from that. So getting started is just doing little bits, really. But it could be, like I go up the canal that whereby we live quite a lot, and um, there's footpaths that lead off the canal. And it's, go and have a look down that one. If you've not yeah. been down that one before, go and have a look and, and try something new, try something different. And then again, you get a bit more confidence because you've been, you know what's down there now, and you found that bit yourself. And yeah. you, you've kind of walked <laughs> down that bit and and experience that as all oh, right okay you wonder what's down this one and then it kind of expands and expands and yeah. um, and you can do that with anything you know like riding a bike you you can again have a watch or strava on your phone or something and do five kilometers on a bike ride yeah. which shouldn't take long you know pick a route where you know where you're comfortable with and then next time See if you can do it a little, you know, a little bit further, a bit of a little bit club. further. Yeah, and it's the same for anything, isn't it? You know, yeah. Um, yeah, sport or business or whatever. You know, just chip away a little bit at it, and and if you're wanting to see improvements, you know, write write it down what you did and when you did it. And Strava is really good for that on your phone, like for running or cycling, because you can see a record of how far you've gone that yeah, year or in that period in that week or. You know, and there's there's plenty of groups you can join on things like that as well, trying to chivvy people along. Like there's one I was a member of, um, where it counts how many activities you do in a week, or it counts how how long you've done the activities for that week, and you get a leaderboard. So yeah, you, know, you can get your friends all together on it, um, all of them join up on it and say, right, it doesn't have to be quick, it doesn't have to be any length, just going out for an hour and a half yeah. or something it's just the doing half. isn't it that's the thing it's, yeah, it's yeah. just, just yeah. giving it a go but the um you know like i said i'm not i'm not really any good at the, the things i've done i've just given it a bit of a go and to be honest with you if you, um, if you don't fail at stuff then you've probably tried things that aren't very hard they're not you know, very hard anyway yeah. yeah yeah it's about it's about taking that learning from it isn't it and and not yeah. letting it stop yeah, you I mean, i've done a couple right? of things i've not really fully completed you know that i set out to mm. um, as everybody has i'm sure but um but i know i'm almost happier because it wasn't easy if that makes sense yeah no i think i think it can be kind of you can feel a bit cheated sometimes if you don't find it hard yeah. it's like well yeah i don't I haven't got that sense of achievement yeah, i was exactly. hoping for but also was... in the fact that you're annoyed if you don't complete it is good as well because that shows that you're wanting you're wanting to do it yeah, you know, it's um, important. Yeah. yeah, no, that makes sense. Well, thank you so much, Matt, for your time. No problem, it's been though. it's been really great to hear about your adventures and everything else. We'll put some information on the show notes for people to be able to grab that book. Yeah. Um, yeah. If they want to find out more about you, what can they do? Where can they go? Oh, look at that. <laughs> it's like a little yeah, nice. nice. Um, <clears throat> where can they where can they go? Just just in case they haven't got the show notes to hand. So. Um... The mybookoffullbreaths.co.uk is the link straight to the book page. Um, I've also got the website thematnixon.co.uk, which sounds a little bit 
it's not got the intention of sounding like the Matt Nixon. It's actually the opposite. There's a story behind it, but anyway. Um, uh, so yeah, the Matt Nixon uk because I do some talks and workshops for companies or charities and um, using the book or not using the book. Um, Brilliant. So yeah, that's how you can get in touch. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for having me.